G'day ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. I'm of course Akalfalos and today we're going to be taking a look at the Path of Champions. Siladins Runterra, where we are going to be going over my top champions for potentially easy wins in the upcoming monthly adventures. So for those of you who may have missed yesterday's interview with one of the Riot developers, it was revealed that there will be monthly adventures coming in a fairly interesting format, 70 sets of challenges where you are going to only have 3 uses per champion. So with that fact in mind, and also because I got home from work late today, um, I decided we are going to do a really quick video on champions that I thought would be really really good to get easy wins in this particular mode. So first things first, obviously I have no way of knowing how the challenges will be like, but based on what we know which is that we are only going to have 3 uses per champion, you're obviously going to want to save your strongest champions for potentially the hardest adventures. And because of that, I felt like making a video that could potentially help you guys in preparation for those challenges. Again, I don't know how they will be, but the aim of this video is to give you some ideas and suggestions on builds on champions that I personally think are really really good. And of course most importantly this is just a opinion based on my personal experience with these champions. Some champions in your eyes could be much better than what I've listed here but that doesn't mean that I don't like those champions. Those champions could be good as well. In fact in my opinion I would say a good handful of POC's champions are really decent barring probably the Orn which is fairly expensive but overall based on what I have unlocked and what I have played I'm gonna give you my personal favorites. So I will be giving you the build of each champion and I'll try to explain what I can on how I would play those champions in regards to the star powers. Basically, I'm going to give you the rare relics built first that I would personally run, and I'll also give you some alternatives that you should consider. Most of them are quite frankly repetitive because there is really a set number of relics that actually are just really good in general. So I'm just going to give you what I think is really, really decent. And at the same time, we're also going to be killing two birds with one stone in this video. I'm also going to be giving the newer players out there who may not have access to the monthly adventures from the off, because as we all know, monthly adventures are targeted towards the older player base, I'm still going to take this opportunity to give newer players out there alternatives in terms of common relics. So for those of you who are only interested in my suggestions for rare relic builds for monthly adventures, feel free to skip the common parts. And for those of you who are new to this game, where you're only interested in seeing the ideas or suggestions on lower tier relics like common relics, feel free to skip the rare relics part. Now if you guys would like to see a suggested build for every champion in this game, let me know in the comment section down below. I will do it eventually, but for now let's talk about about what I think will be decent for monthly adventures. So we're going alphabetically here according to my champion roster. As you can see here, we're just going to go in order. Uh, the first one on this list is probably going to be Annie. Now, in my opinion, Annie is fairly decent to use. In fact, she is probably a little bit low effort and obviously, you know, going to get you some easy wins in my opinion. Uh, in terms of the star powers here, Pyromania 2, your spells and skills deal 2 extra damage and play full trick. By the way, this is also a really good, you know, um, video to talk about, you know, possibly strong champion combinations. I believe one of you actually requested that a couple days ago. Um, I think this video could also help you guys out a lot in that regard because I'm probably just giving you some really OP builds at the same time. So it could be decent. Uh, but yeah, coming back to the task at hand, playful trick, plus one starting mana around circuit of fleeting gal in hand. The most important one here is probably going to be the Pyromania 2 with the spells and skills to do two extra damage. Gal could be nice to level up the Annie quickly, but this is probably more important in my opinion. Uh, in terms of the relics here with the Annie, what I would possibly run is definitely not triple gatebreakers. This is just a cheesy build that I tried for a video. Uh, what you might want to go for here is probably a Gale Force that would fairly be decent. Uh, you will want to go with a Luden's Tempest as well. And finally, you might want to go with a Dreadway Chase Gun. So the idea with this one is that you're going to be able to deal a lot of damage consistently because the whenever you summon the Annie, you're going to get Dreadway Chase Gun here with two warning shots to the Nexus. So with the Annie's uh, Luden's Tempest and of course the Star Power, they're going to be dealing a lot of damage to the Nexus. With the Gale Force, they're going to get Recall. You're going to summon her again and she's able to just consistently deal damage to the Nexus. No problem at all. Now, some alternative builds here because I know a lot of you might not have certain relics. Uh, Luden's Tempest, you should be able to get from the Jin campaign, if I'm not mistaken. Dreadway Chase Gun, you're just going to have to get lucky and hope that you get it. And also, there's really no replacement for the Chase Gun, in my opinion. But in terms of the Gale Force here, there is a couple of alternatives that you can go for. I'm mainly going for the Scout on the Gale Force, but assuming you don't have the Gale Force here, uh, you can go with a Grand General's Counter Plan, if I can find it, of course. Where is it? There we go, down here. Grand General's Counter Plan, it's basically the same thing like a Gale Force because you're going to be able to create a fleeting copy of the Annie in hand and if the Annie on the board dies they're just going to be able to summon it again and deal damage obviously not as fast as Gale Force but you know still fairly decent and in terms of common relics that you might want to consider this is probably for the more you know newer players out there you might not have a lot of these rare relics here so some of these common relics that you can consider that are probably not that good well, let's be honest here but could be fairly decent uh, is to probably go to Banshee's Veil that way you're protecting the Annie a little bit remember she's a really weak unit you need to protect her health so Spell Shoot could be important 
important. Uh, Armadillo Shell could also be an alternative here. You can go it against his Rage Blade if you want to. Not really that, you know, um, synergistic in my opinion, but I think Spell Shield or Armadillo Shell should be decent. Uh, a really aggressive one, which could be nice, is actually a Soul Spear, because Annie's going to come on really cheap, and with the Fearsome and the plus one plus zero, you're going to be able to deal damage, you know, without worrying about your blockers, especially on the early turns. Another build that I actually like on the Annie here is actually the CSF and the uh, Shade Leaf build. So if I were to be running this build, I will put the Shade Leaf first, followed by the CSF second. And the reason for this is simply because uh, Greenblade Shade Leaf needs to transfer the Elusive first, and you know then only have the CSF kill the supported ally to get the Elusive back on the Annie. So you know really important to order your relics here. Usually the one at the top is gonna go first, followed by the one second. So definitely you know bear this in mind if you're gonna go with Annie here. So jumping immediately into Diana here, which is probably going to be one of the strongest champions you can use uh, that you should not have too much trouble with, in my opinion, especially if you are at 3 stars. Uh, with Diana, she's just really good overall. She has the ability to get double attack, which is obviously amazing. And Twilight Offering essentially operates as, you know, some sort of a pseudo mana gem, if you will, because you're refilling one mana. Uh, basically, you're just, you know, extending your amount of mana per turn so i guess it's reasonable to say it's a pseudo mana gem but yeah really really strong champion because if you pair this up with the right relics diana is virtually unstoppable definitely not triple guardian trinkets of course even though it's a fairly cheesy build uh the optimal build for diana at least in my opinion is to probably go with a gale force here and then you couple that with a um where is that relic again if i can find it obviously i really wish there was an alphabet filter or something that would make um, you know my life a little bit easier uh troking's crown that's the one so this is obviously really really awesome on Diana because double attack will allow her to attack twice with the TK's crown. You're able to kill the blocker and then attack again straight to the Nexus. That's going to be a hell of a lot of damage. But yeah, if you want to make the most out of it, you can go with maybe the Shade Leaf and the CSF build again. That's just a really viable option on the majority of champions. Uh, you know, elusive double attack is obviously really nice to have. And with the stat line, Diana is going to get really, really good. Now, obviously, in terms of common relics here, since you're attacking quite often, you might want to go with a Ginsu's Rage Blade. That could be really, really decent. Uh, spell Shield could be nice because you might want to protect her because of a 2 cost. In terms of the Gale Force here, if you're not able to have the Gale Force, again, Counter Plan is probably your friend uh, because that will allow you to get an extra copy of Diana, you know, fleeting just in case she dies, the one on the board dies. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh yeah, one more really, really good build that I would actually recommend on Diana, and there's also another champion that can take advantage of this really, really well, is to go with the Bounty Hunter Diana. Build. So you're going to want to go with Bounty Hunter for this one, as well as Double Hearts of Gold. So basically what this will do is that you're going to get plus one, plus one for every 200 gold you have. And with the Heart of Gold, you're going to get 50% or, you know, double of it. It's going to be 100% additional after, you know, during your adventures. So I would assume that this would be really, really good on Diana. You might want to go with one Overwhelm here if you want that extra aggression. But overall, really solid, you know, um, build on the champion, I feel. Uh, what is that? The Grand Duelist Blade could be important for the Challenger, if I could find it, of course. Where is the Grand Duelist? Blade? I cannot find it. I think it's probably down here. It's probably a common relic, right? Uh, yeah, the Grand Duelist Blade is a common relic. What I meant to say, uh, sorry about the sloppiness here, is the Lauren Blade Rack. There's just too many relics. I can't remember them all. So Lauren Blade Rack here or the TK's Crown, both of them should work fairly well. But common relics, if you don't have that, the Grand Duelist Blade and the, uh, what is that, the Troking's Crusher, which will basically do the same thing, give you Overwhelm, will also function fairly nicely. Now, Evelyn is yet another champion that I would actually recommend to some degree because essentially she is really, really strong. Uh, her Pika Ecstasy 2 power here will allow you to get plus 2, plus 2 everywhere. And this includes Evelyn herself as well, which is obviously really good. And the reason why this is amazing is because Evelyn has the potential to level up 5 to 6 times. So you can potentially get a super beefy Evelyn here, which is obviously really, really nice. In terms of the relics here that I would personally run, uh, this is definitely not the build I would go for. Deceiver's Crest has been good. I have tested it out personally, but a more reasonable build, I would say, is to go with a Crown Guard Inheritance here, slap on a Tempest Blade as well, and finally, you might even want to go for your Overwhelm, because that will allow you to deal a lot of damage onto the Nexus. Rally and the Stun is obviously really nice to have, because again, you're leveling up Evelyn like 5 to 6 times, so you're going to be able to Rally and Stun 5 to 6 times, a no-brainer pick in my opinion, uh, and the Overwhelm will just allow you to deal more damage to the Nexus in case there are blockers. Now, these two relics are also fairly obtainable. Uh, Inheritance is from Darius's Campaign Chapter 2. Tempest Blade is from Misfortune's Campaign Chapter 2, so it should be fairly easy to obtain. But say, for example, if you're lacking in the Rare Relic Department and you really need to go with a Common Relic, uh, definitely go with against those Rage Blade. That will allow you to get, you know, a little bit more extra damage, which could, of course, be really, really nice. Uh, once again, you can't go wrong with potentially a Troking's Crusher or the Grand Dueler's Blade. That way, you're able to deal some really good damage and at the same time, allow you better opportunities to attack. But yeah, Evelyn's pretty solid in my opinion. If you have a lot of, you know, decent relics who can take advantage of this, 
Uh, not to say you can take advantage of her without the decent relics, but it's probably going to be a little bit more difficult. This is probably a little bit better to use if you have some really strong relics, in my opinion. All right, yeah, another really good champion to use is probably going to be Garen. Uh, really easy to basically just cheese the adventure, in my opinion. The stop hours are obviously really good. When an ally strikes granted plus two, plus two, you're going to be able to get a really beefy stat. Singles combat is also really nice because you're going to be able to accelerate the plus two, plus two at the same time Garen's level up here. Uh, in terms of the relics, personally, because, you know, if you've been on the channel, you'll know that I have a really busted build here which is going to involve triple gate breakers i would personally go with triple gate breakers because i have it so obviously i'm going to abuse it uh, but assuming that you don't have triple gate breakers here you can go with the stalker's blade if i can find it of course the stalker's blade could be an alternative here in order to get the strike on the weakest enemy to progress garen's level up uh, you're going to want at least one gate breaker if you have it obviously but if you don't have that you can go with a blade rack as well that will allow you to basically just challenge some units and of course with the troll king's crown again that will allow you to get the overwhelm and take advantage of the high attack stat that you're probably going to get uh, you can go with the Archangel Staff as well because they're going to be generating the, what is that, the Singles Combat. So you can potentially be used this to be able to play the spell to strike the enemy, if you will. Uh, Crown Grand Inheritance is probably the worst one in my opinion, even though it is, you know, the signature relic of Garen here. You definitely don't want this because it's going to be only useful for one turn. A level 2 Garen is just going to rally anyway, so you're definitely not going to want to go with that in my opinion. Uh, you can go with Shade Leaf and the CSF build again because you're going to be able to get an elusive Garen with a high attack stat. Really, really decent in my opinion. And another one that will definitely work here is the uh, Berserker's Buckle, if I can find it. Yeah, Berserker's Buckle. I have two of it, how conveniently, which is obviously really good. Uh, because whenever Garen survives damage, you're going to get a plus 2 plus 2. So essentially, you're going to get a plus 4 plus 4 if you have two of it. On top of that, with the Striking, which is the prerequisite of getting damage, uh, you're going to be able to get a plus 6 plus 6 instead. That's kind of crazy in my opinion. So really, really decent combo here. Assuming you don't have these rare relics, I understand. What you can go for here is against his Rage Plate. Just a really good relic in general especially if you don't have the options I presented. Quick attack is also nice because after all, the Garen will be able to, you know, quick attack safely, I think, in my opinion. Uh, and of course, Overwhelm can serve you greatly as well. Obviously not the most optimal build, but it could be decent, um, assuming that you don't have any rare relics, which is probably not the case. Now on to Gwen now, yet another champion that I would consider if you want to use this for the monthly adventures. A really, really strong champion because the star powers here will allow it to get a lot of hallowed buffs, which is obviously what you like to see. And the reason why you want a lot of hallowed buffs is because of a card here where she's able to drain two from the enemy nexus which brings me to what we want to talk about in terms of the relics you're gonna to want to go with luden's tempest here this is probably really important on the gwen because they're gonna be able to drain a lot of damage from the enemy nexus which is obviously really really nice now we've got a couple of options in terms of the rare relics here i am going into choking's crown because i want to deal more damage to the nexus which is obviously really good gwen should get a really high attack stat with the hallowed so this is probably really useful alternatively you can go with a gill force here that way you're able to be basically get double attacks with the scout on Gwen. Uh, you can go with the crown guard inheritance as well. That way you are able to basically rally at the same time, deal even more damage on the Gwen. But yeah, these are just really, really good options on the Gwen. In terms of the comments here, Rage Blade, you can never go wrong, especially since Gwen, as we all know, and as I just mentioned, relies on getting a high attack stat. This will raise the attack stat, so obviously it's a no-brainer in my opinion. Once again, Challenger is pretty neat, likewise with the Laurent Blade Rack that you can get, you know, the rare version of the Grand Duelist Blade in my opinion. Uh, so yeah, the Lauren Blade Rack could be an option to consider as well. Overall, just really, really good relics that you can potentially consider if you're playing the Gwen. Uh, you should have no problem using this champion, in my opinion, so I think you should be fine. Up next is obviously the poster girl itself. It's probably going to be Jinx. Uh, so yeah, Jinx is just a really over OP champion overall. I'm not going to spend too much time talking about this one because I'm pretty sure you guys know what to do already. Just take full advantage of the what's the worst that could happen too in order to just spam damage to the Nexus. And of course, to efficiently take advantage of that with the relics, they're going to want to go with a Gale Force, a Payload, as well as a gatebreaker so gale force is just to allow you to recall and constantly resummon triggering the loose cannons payload and then discarding and dealing damage to the nexus obviously a really op combo uh gatebreaker is here because you are able to strike for some extra damage onto the nexus now i know some of you actually suggested going with a uh where is that the riptide battery here on the jinx but in my opinion i prefer the gatebreaker and the reason for that is simply because uh the riptide battery could be disadvantageous if you have a cost reduction on the jinx they're going to be dealing less damage whereas with the Gatebreaker, it's a little bit more stable. Uh, you're going to get guaranteed 4 damage compared to the Riptide Battery, which will drop, you know, the damage down to 3. 
So not much really to talk about this one. This is just a really OP champion overall. So we're just going to move on onto the next one. Now, another recommendation for me is probably going to be the Lux. Really easy champion to use, really OP as well. Uh, in terms of the star powers, so you're going to be generating a zero cost golden adjust every time you play six plus minor spells, which is surprisingly not that difficult to achieve. Her deck actually caters to that, which I'm not going to go too in depth into, but you should be able to get a lot of good six plus cost spells from a deck, which will allow you to get Lux to a level two quicker. In terms of the relics, however, you're going to want to run a Ludens Tempest again. Uh, just a generally really good, you know, relic for a lot of spell-based champions like the Annie, the Jin, and the Lux. But yeah, in terms of the Lux here, yeah, this is just going to amp up her, you know, final spark damage, which is obviously really nice. And Arcane Comet here, if you're lucky enough to get this, will allow you to get a consistent um, generation of not only final light, but also at the same time, uh, you know, generation of golden adjust in hand. So really, really decent. You're going to be able to consistently rally as well as deal damage every single round. Uh, I'm going at a lost chapter here quite simply because I want that mana upon summoning the Lux because as we all know this costs 5 mana fairly expensive so with the lost chapter I'm able to refill that mana and play some spells which I think could be important you can go with the Archangel Staff here as well that should be fairly decent uh, but in terms of the other relics here I really don't think there's anything too you know synergistic in terms of the rare relics in my opinion you can consider maybe a Rigos Lantern because essentially Lux will be in your hand for quite some time so that way you get the impact stacks on her and since we're on the topic of cost you can go with a Scourge Stash if you wanted to get her on cheaper but ideally you will want to go with what I just suggested there. Ludens Tempest is probably extremely important. And if you're lucky, go with the Arcane Combat. If you're not, probably just go with the Archangel Staff. You can get this from the Lux campaign, ironically, and the Ludens Tempest, as I mentioned, from the Jing campaign. So yet even more passive damage champions, which I think is really decent. It's probably the Teemo. His stop, I would say, will allow you to do that, actually, because you're able to plant 10 Poison Puff Caps on random cards in the enemy deck whenever you attack. Obviously really good. And with the Strike Swiftly, getting a fleeting, you know, Poison Dart with Burst Speed, uh, you're able to play that easily, which is obviously really, really good. That's more Poison Puff Caps as well, which is nice. But in terms of the relics here, to take advantage of the Teemo fully, you're going to want to go with potentially a Guardian's Angel or a Gale Force build combined with double Gatebreakers here in order to allow you to get a lot of puff caps into the deck. Now, once again, I know this is a tall order because not many of you are going to have double Gatebreakers here, which is perfectly fine, or Gale Force here, which is also perfectly fine. What you can go for here, which can potentially help you, is to actually go with one CSF here because Teemo already has the Elusive. You don't really need this Greenlight Shade Leaf, and there's a lot of units in the Teemo deck that essentially has good stats that don't really have you know that many long lasting effects. Off the top of my head is that 4 tree unit that essentially creates poison puff cap spells. Outside of that it's not really doing anything it's just a good blocking unit. You can kill that and get a good stat on Teemo in order to protect him so CSF could be an option here. Uh, assuming that you don't have a Gatebreaker here, assuming you don't have two Gatebreakers here, what you can go for potentially is to go with a Grand Generous Counter Plan. That way you're creating a fleeting copy of the Teemo. This is a replacement for the Gale Force by the way. That way you're able to play either Poison Puff Caps or if the Teemo dies, you can play you know, the fleeting copy of the Teemo in order to get him onto the board. Um, another option you can go for here is also really good is the, where is that item if I could find it obviously, there's a lot of items like I just mentioned, there's just so many here I can't keep track of them all, there we go, the Deceiver's Crest, it's just above it, but anyway, um, the Deceiver's Crest could be a really decent option here, because you're going to be able to create a copy of the Poison Puff Cap spell, which you should be able to use on the same turn, and assuming that you don't, you're going to have a couple extra copies of the Teemo as well, so you're just going to have Puff Caps galore in my opinion. A uh, good common relic on the Teemo would probably be the Ginsu's Rage Blade again, uh, that way you are able to attack and get the stat buff because Teemo is elusive. You can of course go with the Spell Shield if I could find it. The Banshee's Veil is going to be nice to have because you're able to protect the one cost Teemo. Alternatively, Armadillo Shell in order to give him the extra stat buff and at the same time function as protection. Really, really decent options here in my opinion for the Teemo. So yet another Bandle City champion that you can consider is also the Vagar. Vagar is actually pretty neat in my opinion and he's really easy to get to level 2 because of his star powers here where you're going to be creating a Darkness that cost zero in hand every round and all the darknesses that you have is going to accelerate the burst which is obviously really really good so in terms of the relics here what you're going to want to run on the vagar is probably going to be a ludens tempest because they're not only going to be amping up your darkness damage with ludens tempest they're going to get extra damage as well courtesy of his effect which is obviously really nice to have his level two will allow you to deal darkness damage directly to the nexus so you're going to want to have as many you know damage boosters as you can 
Uh, Scourge's stash is also fairly neat because they're able to bring on the Vagar earlier and because they're able to bring on the Vagar earlier, going to deal even more damage as a result. I think it's just a really good one to have in general. Now, if you had the extra rare relic slot here, I would recommend going to Archangel Staff in order to refill your Spellman every round, which will allow it to play Darknesses. Now, I know it mentioned it creates zero cost Darknesses, but if you're creating Darkness from the Vagar deck, so something like the Dark Pop Acolyte or something, uh, you're going to create three cost Darknesses. The regular cost Darkness, which is not going to get cost reduction. So Archangel Staff could actually help you there in that regard. So that's why I recommend that. But in terms of other relics here, again, I just recommend going with the CSF and the Shade Leaf because you can potentially kill some units. Uh, but in terms of like common relics, I would say go with a Spell Shoe. You're going to want to protect Vagar for as long as you can, especially get him to level 2 in order to deal more damage. Uh, again, Armadillo Shell will allow you to do that in the process. But outside of that, Lost Chapter could also be fairly nice because you're going to get the mana refill the second you summon the Vagar. So you could potentially play some spells that you might have already created. So it might come as a surprise that Aatrox is also on my list because quite frankly, I once again have triple gate breakers. So this is definitely a really viable option for me. But assuming that you don't have that, you can still take advantage of the Aatrox in my opinion. Uh, Corrupted Weapon and Inferno Chains will allow you to level them up a little bit quicker, which is obviously really good. And that's what you want to do. Um, in terms of the relics here, if you don't have gate breakers, you can go to Stalker's Blade here. Go to Berserker's Buckle as well if you have it because they're able to strike and at the same time reduce the cost of World Ender. Uh, Ginsu's Rage Blade is always nice to have because you're going to want to attack quite frequently with the Aatrox. But assuming you don't have these rare relics as well, what you can go for here, once again, CSF and the Shade Leaf build, really, really solid. Uh, alternatively, you can also go with the Scourger Stash if you want to bring him on a little bit earlier, although I think this is not that important. Overwhelm is also nice to have. I know the Aatrox already gets over but in case you want your allies to get overwhelmed because chances are your allies are going to get a really high attack stat as well uh, this could be a really viable option challenger is also nice to have if you want to but personally i would recommend going with more strike synergy that way you're able to get the world ender off quicker and as a result level them up a little bit faster now once again corner relics that you might want to go for here are probably the quick attack that could actually be decent because aatrox doesn't get quick attack so it could actually help you out a little bit outside of that not much really needs to be done armadillo shell could be good that way you get a tough on the aatrox but you're gonna get regen generation anyway so it's not that important uh, but two other rare relics that i think could be really useful or worthwhile is to go to void one carapace because there's going to be a lot of units that has a lot of good keywords so essentially if they die aatrox will get the keyword and that could be really decent likewise with the rigos lantern because he's going to be fairly expensive he's going to sit in your hand for quite some time you can potentially build impact damage on him and bring that on and essentially deal even more damage as a result so having heard my reasonings on aatrox here i guess you can imagine i have the same set of uh, rationale for the darius here so i'm not going to spend too much time talking on this one the relics are practically the same uh you can go with the strike relics like the you know the gate breakers and the stalker's blade uh rigos lantern is nice because he's fairly expensive you are able to basically just give him a lot of impact stacks and as for common relics here you're probably going to want to go with the ginzo's rage play it could be decent because overwhelmed you are able to raise the stat and at the same time quick attack could be nice as well that way you're protecting darius to attack safely and finally regen could be decent too because they're going to be able to give darius the ability to get his health back up to full so basically the same like the aatrox in terms of the build here so i'm not going to talk too much about that but in terms of the star powers here the reason why darius could be decent is because of the rally here where you're able to get an extra additional attack per turn so i think this could be fairly decent in my opinion now next on this list is going to be Jax, and another champion that i would personally recommend in my opinion uh reason because he's just really cheap really aggressive i think he's a really good candidate for the monthly adventures in terms of the star powers here the lhasa akafia is probably going to be really good because you're going to get a plus one plus zero uh on your allies whenever you attack which is obviously really nice on the equipment uh, specifically so also at the same time with the relics here you're gonna want to go with something really aggressive now my personal favorite build on the Jax is probably gonna be gale force and double gate breakers because you're gonna be striking a lot like that but assuming that you don't have this build once again go with a grand generous counter plan the grand generous counter plan and the gale force if you cannot tell by now is really interchangeable both of these operate somewhat similarly the difference is that the gale force will recall the same card the grand generous counter plan will be generating fleeting copies of the card so assuming that you know if you don't have gale force and your unit dies you have the option to bring on the fleeting copy of it and it's perfectly fine so again if you don't have double gate breakers go to stalker's blade all you need to do here is just strike you know some units in order to level up the jacks some champions yes you might need some nexus damage like the darius and the timo that will probably function much better if you have double gate breakers but some champions you don't need double gate breakers you can go to stalker's blade it's perfectly fine a 
assuming you also don't have one gate breaker here, you can go with something else. I would personally recommend going with the Shade Leaf and the CSF build again. Once again, I know I'm repeating this many, many times, but CSS and Shade Leaf is just a really decent build. Uh, this way, you're killing the unit that you're supporting with the Jax in order to transfer the keywords and the stats onto the Jax. One thing to note, really nice thing to note as well, is that if you're killing an equipped ally and the equipped ally has, say, maybe a scout or an impact, you're still going to get the impact and the scout onto your Jax because it's going to count as the keywords that's going to be transferred. So that's just something really neat that I picked up that I thought I'd like to share. Now, likewise with the Diana, a Bounty Hunter Jax here could also function really well because they're going to want to strike for a lot of damage to level them up. So having the additional goal granted by the Heart of Goal, in turn converting it into stats on Bounty Hunters for now, could actually help you out a ton. So I recommend this build as well. Um, once again, common relics that you can go for, Ginsu's Rage Blade is just a mainstay at this point. Uh, any champion should benefit from this because all you need to do is just attack and get stats, so really, really good. Uh, you can go with the Soul Spear as well, really viable option because Jax comes on really early. There's not many units that should be able to block him, so the Soul Spear could actually benefit you in my opinion. And I think once again, Grand Duelist Blade or potentially the Laurent Blade Rack that I mentioned earlier. Both of those should help you get, you know, challenge on the Jax and allow you to deal a lot of damage in my opinion. So definitely consider these relics. Now, this is another champion that should do exceptionally well in the monthly adventures, in my opinion, and that champion is LeBlanc. So, in terms of the star powers here, you have the attacking ephemeral LeBlanc with the everywhere, everyone. This is just awesome because they're going to be able to deal a lot of damage. LeBlanc is debatably the best POC champion here, either her or Diana. Um, of course, if you discount Jinx, either her or Diana, she's probably one of the best. So, in terms of the relics here, what I would personally run on the LeBlanc in order to take advantage of these star powers, I would personally go with a Gil Force here as well as double gate breakers because they're able to attack twice. As a result, you're going to be able to get two attacking FML LeBlancs on separate attacking turns, obviously, but it's still fairly decent. And the good thing is that whenever you summon an attacking FML LeBlanc, that FML LeBlanc also has Gatebreakers, which will allow it to strike, which obviously just deals a lot of damage, which is really, really good. But once again, assuming that you don't have double Gatebreakers here, always, always go for a Stalker's Blade. It's perfectly fine because all you need to do is just strike to level up the LeBlanc. So it's perfectly fine to go with a Stalker's Blade. But assuming you don't have the extra Gatebreaker as well, go with the Troll King's Crown if they overwhelm if you have this because they're able to deal a lot of damage to the Nexus which is obviously really nice and yet again if you don't have the Gale Force I know I keep repeating this but I just want to make this really clear but if you don't have the Gale Force Counter Plan is your friend because they're going to be able to summon LeBlanc assuming that she dies and quite frankly she might die rather frequently because she is a 5-2 unit so in case you want to protect that you might want to go with a Spell Shield here in order to make sure that she's able to survive now next on this list is actually going to be Varus so this is a really interesting one because you can get a really really strong Varus here. Uh, in terms of the star powers here, the Blighted Blessing is probably the best one in my opinion because you're going to be able to get a copy of it onto your strongest ally and chances are your strongest ally might actually be the Varus most of the time and you should be able to make sure that he's the strongest ally as well because you should be able to grant him a lot of stats prior to essentially going with what we're trying to achieve here which I'll get to in a second. And what we're trying to achieve here on the Varus is essentially getting him to a really really high attack stat with the Him of Valor. So for those of you who don't know, we can potentially get a lot of beefy stats on the Varus if we're able to play the redoubled Valor, the tree cost redoubled Valor onto the Varus, and that will actually bring up to a really crazy attack stat. I have done this before, almost 100 plus damage if I remember correctly, so obviously really, really good. Um, Archangel Staff is there just to allow you to make sure you're able to play that. But now that this Hymn of Valor is patched, I really don't think this is that important. You can potentially make do without the Archangel Staff, potentially just build up some spell mana and then potentially use that. But alternatively, you can go with another really decent relic. I don't have this unlocked yet, but a Chemtech Duplicator could be fairly decent. Because when you think about it, you're gonna get a copy of the Redouble Valor uh, because of Varus' star power. And then on top of that, you're gonna get another copy of it if you have the Chemtech Duplicator. So you're gonna get three Redouble Valors on the Varus, and that's gonna be a really, really crazy Varus with a really beefy attack stat. Now, Him of Valor is obtained through Bard's Chapter 2 campaign, so it could be a little bit tough to complete because Bard is, well, Bard. But if you are able to get it, I promise you, this is probably gonna be one of the more busted builds in the POC. So alternatively, if you don't have the Rare Relics here, you can, of course, go with the Challenger again or even the Overwhelm that would potentially work. Once again, CSF and the Shade Leaf build will work really, really well here. Uh, in general, the CSF and the Shade Leaf build just works, you know, overall in my opinion. And 
And finally, in terms of the common relics here, Rage Blade is always a friend because you're gonna be able to raise the stats and that will allow you to get, you know, extra redoubled valor buffs if you have this. But assuming you don't have the redoubled valor, go to Lost Chapter because there's gonna be a lot of spells that will actually, you know, promote target synergy here. So having the Lost Chapter on hand at the very least could allow you to play some targets in order to level up the Varus quicker or some of the other key units in the deck. So last on this vis is gonna be Vayne. So Vayne is just really aggressive in general and in my opinion, really, really good. Uh, with the star powers here, the scout from the Night Hunter is just amazing because you're gonna be able to attack twice, which is obviously what you need for the Vayne. And the it must do something is also really, really good because essentially you're gonna be able to get a golden spatula in hand and that's gonna to count towards your Night Hunter as well. Um, the star power two, the golden spatula two, if I'm not mistaken, the it must do something too, will give you a golden spatula with a random keyword, which is obviously much better. But assuming that you don't have that, you should still be able to function with this because in terms of the relics here, I would recommend going with a Troll King's Crown, a Archangel Staff, and a Rage Blade on the vein. So this is obviously one of the more standard vein builds in my opinion. Um, Overwhelm is just nice to have on the vein because you're going to be able to attack multiple times. And at the same time, you should have a really high attack stat. So that's a no-brainer option in my opinion. Uh, Archangel Staff will actually allow you to play Tumble a little bit faster. This is not necessary. You can, of course, swap this out for something like maybe a CSF again or maybe a Shade Leaf again. But yeah, this is just so that you could play the Tumble a little bit earlier. This is not a necessity. You can, of course, swap this out. Um, Ginsu's Rage Blade. This is actually one of the champions that will actually benefit from, you know, having a common relic all the time. Ginsu's Rage Blade will actually increase the attack stat of the vein here because they're going to be attacking a lot of time. So this is obviously really, really good. Pair this up with the King's Crown. This is just a no-brainer pairing in my opinion. Now you can go with some other decent stuff as well. Um, quick Attack it could be decent if you're not confident of getting the Quick Attack through the Golden Spatula. Spell Shield could also be decent because of that very reason. But ideally, I think this is probably a really good build. Uh, you can go with a Void Bone Carapace if you want to because essentially if you have a 3-star Vein and say one of the unit dies, you should be able to transfer that keyword onto the Vein and you should be able to deal even more damage that way. So obviously, I think really, really good option here. And last but not least, as well having the challenger from uh the Laurent blade rack could also serve you nicely because you should be able to get better chances to attack but i don't think this is that important in my opinion all right and there you have it those are some champions that i think are basically auto win champions that you should definitely use for the upcoming monthly adventures when they drop now i'll definitely be covering the monthly adventures when they drop uh, but for now we are going to end things here so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and if you did consider leaving a like as well as subscribing to the channel i really do appreciate that support but most importantly it's so that you don't miss which episodes or upload a Legends of Runeterra or Path of Champions content just like this one. Now with all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching as well as join me on this video here. This is Kevlar signing off. Hopefully I catch you all in the next one. Goodbye.